Operators in VHDL look a lot like operators in programming languages, but understanding how they get translated into hardware is important before we use them. So when we examined the uh, VHDL design for the 16-bit adder, we had a line that said something like this, C is equal to A plus B. So the plus here, the addition, is an operator. It is redefined as a function in uh, the standard logic uh, package of the RPD library, but it is also a native operator in VHDL. So VHDL allows you to use a bunch of operators just like programming languages do, we're going to take a look at these operators now, and we're going to. Uh, the, the most important thing is to understand how they are used, but also how they get translated into hardware and when it is used, uh, it is safe to use them, and when their use should be avoided. So this table lists uh, arithmetic operators. We have uh, three basic arithmetic operators: addition, subtraction, and multiplication. So. These, uh, the first two, could be uh, unary or uh, binary operators, meaning they can accept two operands or one operand. Uh, when, we use, uh, when we use them as unary operators, uh, this would be the negation, for example, where C is equal to minus A. Now, multiplication always accepts two operands. When we look at addition and multiplication, and subtraction is basically the same as addition, we have to think of what hardware results when we use them. And so basically addition uh, is, if we add two n-bit numbers, the result is going to be saved in an n plus one bit register. If we use multiplication and we have two operands that are n and m bits long, the result is generally going to be n plus m bits long. So when you use these operators in, in, in VHDL, you have to make sure that the signal in which the result gets stored is wide enough to allow the storage of the result noiselessly. Then you can perform truncation on the result if you want. And we talked about this in detail in an earlier video uh, with fixed point design. Now, this table shows comparison operators. Uh, comparison operators act uh, on integers or standard logic types, and they produce a Boolean or uh, logical result, which is either 0 or 1. The 0 and the 1 that result from comparison operators are not binary values. They are not bits. They are actually true and false results. So when we think about uh, comparison operators and we try to think about how they get implemented in hardware, uh, they will generally be implemented using subtractors. So we'll have subtractors that will look at the sign bit of the result to figure out if one of the operands is greater than the other or not. Now, uh, this table shows two operators which uh, perform uh, shifts, either shifting to the left or shifting to the right. Uh, they accept two operands, which is the number or the uh, bit string on which we act, and the number of bits uh, by which we perform uh, the shifting. This table shows miscellaneous operators that we haven't covered in the other tables. Uh, there's uh, a bunch of logical operators which perform uh, logic functions, simple logic functions, like inversion, and, or, NAND, NOR, and XOR. If you use buses on these operators, then the operations are done on a, in a bitwise fashion so that you have a result uh, vector which is of the same length as the two operators, but uh, each bit in the result is the uh, logical operation on the corresponding two bits from the operands. We also have a bunch of operators re related to division. So we have a full division here. We have a function or an operator that gives you the remainder. We have a function or an operation that gives you only the quotient of the operation. Uh, there's also a bunch of um, shift operators that perform logical shifts or arithmetic shifts to the left and to the right. There's an exponentiation operator that raises one function uh, one oper operand to the power of the other. So this basically performs op1 to the power of op2. There's one operator here that is really important, and we just need to talk about it in a little bit more detail, and that's the concatenation operation. 
uh, the uh, sign for the concatenation operation is the ampersand. And what it does is it takes two uh, vectors and they have to be of the same type. So if we are talking about standard logic vectors, they have to, be, uh, to both be standard logic vectors. And when you perform concatenation on this, the result is also going to be a standard logic vector. And that standard logic vector can be stored in another signal. And this signal has to, be, has to have the length of uh, both of these combined together. So the concatenation operation just produces a new vector, which is the concatenation of the two original vectors. The reason this is important is because we will use it repeatedly to do uh, very interesting things. For example, uh, one of the most efficient implementations of shift registers uses the concatenation operation. So when we look at operators, the question isn't what do they do, because most of them are kind of self-evident. Um, the question really is how do they get translated into hardware and what is the relative cost of each function or, or of each operation and should I use them um, freely or should I be uh, concerned when I use one of these operators? And the answer really depends. So we can say that a bunch of operations are really uh, simple and their use shouldn't be avoided. I would say that shifting in general is a very safe operation. Uh, concatenation is also a very safe operation, meaning that the hardware cost of these operations is very low and the synthesizer is really good at producing good hardware out of them. Addition is also very safe because adders are uh, simple enough and there are usually very good uh, fast adders available in the library, whether your target is FPGAs or ASICs. So I would use adders freely or relatively freely. Uh, this also includes comparison operations, which can be used um, without really much afterthought. Now, this brings us to multiplication, and I think multiplication needs to be used sometimes. Um, so, you know, it's unavoidable. But when you use multiplication, you should be careful. You should be careful about two things. First of all, about the width of the outputs of the multiplier which requires you to perform a fixed point simulation before you start writing the VHDL. But you should also be concerned about the number of multipliers you use. So don't use it uh, without, you know, don't use it sparingly. You just need to count the number of actual multipliers that you declare. And if you could timeshare some of your multipliers, you should definitely do so. Also notice that in a good hardware implementation, the critical path will usually be a path that contains a multiplier. This is because multipliers are relatively slow. So a multiplier is usually um, only half as fast as an adder of comparable word length, usually even slower than that. So multipliers tend to dominate your critical path. Now that brings us to a bunch of operators that I would suggest you never use. I would suggest you never use the exponentiation operation. I would suggest you never use division. I would suggest you never use uh, the quotient operators or the remainder operators. I would also suggest you not use any of the shifting operators in uh, VHDL. Now, some of these are easier to uh, justify than, than others. When I say don't use exponentiation, and don't use division, it's because it's really hard to, 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 to predict how this will get translated into hardware. It depends on the synthesizer and the vendor library, but I can guarantee you that the resulting hardware is going to be really bad. It's going to be very slow and it's going to be power hungry. So you should actually look at your algorithm, go back to your algorithm and look at it and think about ways in which you can avoid using an exponentiation. Think about ways in which you can avoid using a, a division. Usually when there's a division in the algorithm, that could be replaced by a multiplication somewhere else. Usually when there's an exponentiation, you have to think, is this really an exponent or is it a phase? Is it an e power j something? So take a look at the algorithm if you have to use some of these. When I say don't use uh, shift operators, that's really just a preference. You can use them, they are not they're not going to produce unpredictable hardware. They are well behaved. But I just think that it's more readable 
and easier to write shifting operators using the concatenation operator. And I'll show you how to do this with shift registers and you'll see that it's actually much easier to read. Um, so there's nothing that you can do uh, with shift operators that you cannot do using loops and the concatenation operator.